I'm sorry, but this is not okay. Worrying people about the safety, the health of their children when you clearly haven't even read the relevant literature. Toxic foods promoted on TikTok by Ann Reardon, aka How to Cook That. We've got Fugu. Eating it can literally kill you, so that's not a surprise. We have Daily Harvest, whose lentil crumbles were linked to 133 hospitalizations, and Flaxseed. Over the past month, I've received several comments from some of you who watched Anne's video. Not too surprising, considering flax is in a lot of vegan stuff. When mixed with water, it becomes this thick, gel-like stuff consistency that makes for a decent egg replacer in baked goods, muffins, and whatnot. Plus, it's really healthy. It's got a lot of omega-3s. Just one tablespoon of ground flax has all the ALA we need in a day. But according to Anne, flax is a toxic food and we should not give it to kids at all. So if you're an adult and you want to risk it, then that's your choice. But if you have children, I'd suggest just leaving it out of their diets. Anne starts the video by talking about apple seeds. Most of us know about apple seeds and cyanide. They contain amygdalin, which releases cyanide when broken, like via chewing. About a year ago, my four-year-old, then three-year-old, ate an entire apple, including the core, seeds, everything. And I was kind of worried. I went to the, you know, poison control website or whatever it is and put in all the information, but they were fine. Which makes sense because as Anne points out, it takes a whole lot of apple seeds to actually make someone sick. So if you weighed 60 kilos or 130 pounds, you would need to eat between 382 and 2,625 apples and chew all the seeds so that they were all open. And so that's a huge amount of apples. It's very unlikely and understandably that's why there are no reported cases of people dying from eating apple seeds. Then she moves on to flax seeds saying that like apples, flax seeds contain amygdalin. Now if you eat the flax seeds whole, no problem. But if you buy them milled or if you grind them up or blend them yourself, then you're exposing yourself to that amygdalin and there's plenty of YouTube videos that instruct you to do just that the full benefits of your flax seeds, eat them as often as possible in the ground form. Grind for a few seconds. So you see it's now in powder form. A tablespoon of this in my smoothie or my porridge every day. Two tablespoons per day. It's important to note that in none of these clips does the person suggest eating more than two tablespoons of ground flax per day. The amount of amygdalin in flax seeds, just like in apples, varies according to the variety of flax seed and even where it's grown and the conditions it's grown under. So if we take the highest amount that's been measured in flax seeds, just so that we have the worst case scenario, if you've got that one in your house, then if you weighed 60 kilos and you ate between 70 and 160 grams of milled flax seed, that would be enough for a lethal dose of cyanide. One tablespoon of ground flax is about seven grams. So 70 grams of ground flax would be about 10 tablespoons. Who is eating 10 tablespoons of ground flax every day or in a sitting? Who's eating half that? A tablespoon of this in my smoothie or my porridge every day. We eat a good amount of flax, ground flax in this house, especially me during the winter when I have oatmeal pretty much every day. I like to add a tablespoon of ground flax to my oatmeal. Even still, the most I eat in a day is probably less than two tablespoons. If I have the one tablespoon in my oatmeal and then maybe another teaspoon, if that, from baked goods, from some muffins or cookies I made. I usually use two tablespoons of ground flax in a whole recipe, a whole batch of cookies, a whole batch of muffins. The European Food Safety Authority recommends that adults don't have more than a tablespoon of ground flaxseed in a day. So I looked at the European Food Safety Authority's report on this. It's from 2019, and it does not say adults shouldn't have more than one tablespoon per day. If we go to table 23, which is specifically on linseed or flax, first we see that the maximum consumption is per eating occasion, not per day. Second, for adults, the mean maximum intake, this is based on a weight of of 73.9 kilograms or about 163 pounds is 10.9 grams. So again, that's per eating occasion. So three eating occasions would be about 32 
12.7 grams per day. Maybe she looked at the P5 section here, that's referring to body weight. Those in P5, the fifth percentile, would be those at the lowest. You can see here the fifth percentile is 52 kilograms, that's about 115 pounds. For this group, the maximum amount is about one tablespoon. But again, that's one tablespoon per eating occasion or per meal, not per day. So presumably three tablespoons per day for an adult this size would be fine. Third, eating more than this three tablespoons per day or six tablespoons per day if you're in the highest percentile doesn't mean you're at risk of dying. It means you've exceeded the acute reference dose, which accounts for the worst case scenario. In other words, if you weigh this 115 pounds and you eat more than one tablespoon of ground flax, flax containing the highest amount of cyanogenic glucosides that's been recorded in flax, you're still nowhere close to dying or even experiencing any clinical symptoms. And again, most people are eating a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons in a smoothie, in oatmeal, or they're making a couple flax eggs for a muffin recipe, assuming 12 muffins, that works out to half of a teaspoon of ground flax per muffin. Fourth, this one is really important, I'm surprised Anne didn't mention it, cyanide is not heat stable. While cooking dry flax seeds, like laid out on a pan in the oven, removes only a little bit, cooking them in a batter, like for muffins or cookies, removes a lot. In this study from 1993, researchers made muffins containing 25 grams of ground flax each, so three and a half tablespoons per muffin. Yummy. Again, most muffins containing flax contain a lot less than this. Anyway, after cooking these muffins for 15 to 18 minutes at 230 degrees Celsius or 446 degrees Fahrenheit, cyanide was undetectable. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't usually cook muffins at 450 degrees. I don't think I've ever cooked them at that high temperature. It's usually 350, maybe 375. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any information, any study on flax cooked in a batter at a lower, like more normal temperature, but it's very likely that a significant portion, if not all, of the cyanide would be lost at 350. Boiling is also effective, so when you're cooking oats, instead of adding the ground flax afterwards, which is what I usually do, you could add them along with the oats while you are cooking the oats. But again, it's not necessary because there's no indication that a tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons of raw ground flax is bad for you. Fifth and finally, there are no reported cases of people dying from eating apple seeds. Weird she brought this up for apple seeds, but not for flax seeds, because it's the same. There's no evidence, there's no reported case of flax seeds causing cyanide poisoning. Sweden, however, suggests that you should avoid milled flax seed altogether because we don't know the safe level of it. While some countries like Japan do regulate the amount of cyanide in flax seeds, so they won't allow flax seeds that exceed that limit into the country. Sweden is the only country I could find that says don't eat flax seeds. Here in the US, we have the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They recommend flax for eye health. We have the American Academy of Pediatrics. They recommend flax for kids to treat constipation. This is from Britain. This is from Canada. This is from Australia. So what's more likely, that one country is right or that like all the other countries are right? This is an area we're unlikely to get any clarification as to what the safe dose is. Because if a scientist says, I want to do a study and give people doses of amygdalin to see what level of dosage they're going to get a toxic dose of cyanide, no ethics committee is going to pass that as a study. You can't, let's just see how much kills someone, shall we? That you just wouldn't be able to do that. No, you wouldn't be able to do that. But what you can do is give them unreasonably large quantities of foods containing amygdalin, which has been done. That muffin study I mentioned earlier found 50 grams, about seven tablespoons of ground flax per day, was perfectly safe. There was no evidence of cyanide poisoning in the nine female participants. This study, published in 2016, gave 30.9 grams, or about 4.5 tablespoons, of ground flax containing the highest amount of cyanide they could find to 12 participants and then tested their blood. They ate it alone, mixed with water, drunk or spooned in about two minutes. Oh my God. 
kill me. <laughs> Even the highest recorded blood cyanide level was way lower than the toxic threshold and way, 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 way lower than the lethal threshold. In addition, they gave one person 100 grams of ground flax. That's almost a full cup. This person's blood cyanide did reach and actually slightly exceed the upper end of the toxic threshold, but even still, no clinical symptoms were observed. As the researchers note, this is a very high amount of linseed, hard to ingest quickly, and in order to meet worst case conditions, it has to be eaten on an empty stomach directly after grinding by a machine without consumption of other foods. In other words, reaching the toxic threshold that's been set for ground flaxseed is really, really hard, virtually impossible. Reaching the lethal threshold? Probably actually impossible. So if you're an adult and you want to risk it, then that's your choice. But if you have children, I'd suggest just leaving it out of their diets. So if we go back to that table from the EFSA, we'll see for the smallest toddlers, 8.7 kilograms or 19 pounds, that's about the size of my 15 month old, 1.3 grams per eating occasion, which is not a lot, but it sounds about right, at least for my 15 month old. I make these breakfast cookies that they love. The entire batch, the entire 24 cookies contains two tablespoons. That works out to about a quarter teaspoon of ground flax per cookie or 0.6 grams. And the cookies are cooked. But if you have children, I'd suggest just leaving it out of their diets. I'm sorry, but this is not okay. Worrying people about the safety, the health of their children, when you clearly haven't even read the relevant literature, when virtually all of the people who have researched this have researched flax, say flax is fine, when virtually all health organizations say flax is fine, it's just shitty. Now, the funny thing is, flax may actually be toxic, but not because of cyanide, because of cadmium. Cadmium is a heavy metal. It can accumulate in our bodies and our organs, particularly our kidneys. According to Consumer Lab, three out of nine of the flaxseed products they tested exceeded California's cadmium limit of 4.1 micrograms per day, including Bob's Red Mill. Bob's Red Mill had 6.1 micrograms in two tablespoons, which is a serving. Again, this is only California. There is no federal limit for cadmium, at least not currently. The EFSA has set a limit 2.5 micrograms per kilogram of body weight per week. So if you weigh 60 kilograms, that would be 150 micrograms per week, which works out to about 21.4 micrograms per day. Even still, I personally do not buy Bob's Red Mill anymore. I choose Trader Joe's, which had a much better uh, result. I think it's 1.5 micrograms per two tablespoons. I do this because the Trader Joe's is cheaper, <laughs> number one. I mean, mostly because of Bob's response. I'm not super duper concerned about cadmium. Obviously, we should want, you know, less cadmium in our food. But uh, yeah, the response from Bob's Red Mill, they basically lied. They said they follow the federal guidelines for cadmium, but there are no federal guidelines for cadmium. So in other words, they're not testing their products for heavy metals for cadmium, and they really don't care. They don't care to. I doubt I'm going to be able to show you all the consumer lab stuff because it is a paid site, which I know is frustrating. I love consumer labs. It has a lot of really good information. Um, I wish it could be free, but that means they would have to do advertising, right? You have two options. You can do advertising or you can have a paid membership option. And when your whole site is about supplements and like recommending some supplements over others, like you really don't want advertising on the site, right? right? It kind of, no, kind of ruins your credibility. So you'll just have to trust me. Personally, as a non-expert, I am not concerned about ground flax, either for myself or for my children. We consume it in normal amounts, usually cooked. Even still, I wouldn't be afraid to eat more flax. Something like this keto bread recipe, one slice has two tablespoons of ground flax. I wouldn't be afraid to eat several slices in one sitting if I wanted to eat keto bread, which I Definitely do not. Again, no cases of cyanide poisoning from flax have ever been reported. But if you feel differently, if you find the evidence concerning, like whatever, no one has to eat flax, right? Yes, it's a healthy food, but no one has to eat it to be healthy. There are certainly other sources of omega-3s and fiber, and it might be a good idea for health organizations to talk more about flax and cyanide, though it's virtually impossible for someone to get sick from flax seeds. There's always that one person who will take it to the extreme. I will never forget the case of a woman 
who was drinking tea made from 100 plus tea bags every day, and she ended up with skeletal fluorosis. You would think you don't have to tell people, hey, don't eat a cup of raw ground flax in a sitting. Maybe we need to tell people not to do that. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, maybe health organizations should talk about flax and cyanide. Again, there's no reported cases, so it's unlikely to be a problem. Um, but certainly this. So if you're an adult and you want to risk it, then that's your choice. But if you have children, I'd suggest just leaving it out of their diet. This is a problem. This is not evidence-based. It is fear-mongering. And it's worse coming from Anne because she's known for doing the opposite, right? For debunking stuff like this. I mean, if you had asked me, I would guess that she'd be on the other end of this, right? Like she saw some stupid TikTok video of someone saying, don't eat flax, it's toxic. And Anne saying, what? No, that's not true. It seems like something she would be debunking, but instead she's actually telling people don't feed flax to your children. No one is right all the time, of course. I hope Anne sees this or sees other people talking about this and considers re-uploading the video given how influential she is. We're talking about a food shown over and over and over again to not only be safe, but really healthy. It's full of things people living in industrialized nations like Australia, like the United States, often don't get enough of. Fiber, omega-3s. Telling people flax is toxic, putting it in a video right alongside something that literally kills people and something that's associated with gallbladder removal. It's not okay. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope this answered your questions. If you were worried about this, I hope this helped to assuage your fears surrounding flax. And again, if you still don't want to eat it, like, it's fine. <laughs> it's just a seed. But I would love to know your thoughts on the whole thing and on Anne's video. And yeah, thank you so much for being here. Like the video if you did, and please subscribe if you want to see more stuff from me. Thank you so much to my patrons at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. I do post two exclusive videos there a month for $5 plus patrons. One is a controversial video that's unrelated to, you know, veganism, nutrition, environmentalism, and exciting news for those of you who don't want to use Patreon, you can use the YouTube memberships. I have launched YouTube membership on here. It's going to offer the same exact things that I offer on Patreon with the same three tiers. The main difference is number one, you get emojis and a badge like next to your name. Like a new member, you get a red badge. A month, you get another color badge. I forgot what it is. Um, and yeah, the emojis only have one so far. It's just a, it's just this little coffee, coffee mug. Yeah. So I would love suggestions for other options because I don't know, partner and I were just like, I don't know. I kind of want to do the robot wolf. I use that for my uh, stream, for my like BRB screen when I streamed for a while on Twitch. I just love it so much. I don't know why. So that's the first difference. And the other difference is that it is more expensive here than on Patreon because YouTube takes quite a bit more than Patreon does. But other than that, it's the same. I will post my exclusive videos here just like I do for Patreon. And anything else that I post to Patreon, I will also post here. Anyway, there should be a little join button somewhere below my, I don't know where it is actually. Where is the join button? I should probably check that, but it's somewhere down there. I know it says join and uh, yeah, check it out if you're interested. Anyway, thanks again, guys. Bye. New video soon.